Westchester area of New York. I am an area manager in the fitness industry. I have two wonderful boys, big boys, 17 and 11, um, Alberto and Steven. I actually grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I moved to New York when I was 18, and I've been living here ever since. Fun fact about me is I love to write children's books. I actually have one already published in Amazon, um, and it is about exercising, so it's a great way to get children involved in exercising and really find the courage to find themselves and do the things that they love. So, yeah, that's a little bit. Um, I'm the baby of five. I have two brothers and two sisters. Um, have a brother in Detroit, a brother in Boston, and both of my sisters are in Florida where my parents live. So, a little bit of information about them. Essentially, what I like to do is stretch my hip area um, as you get older and <laughs> start to go. So, I like to stretch my hip area, uh, in particular when I'm going to do like the leg press, squats. I want to make sure that everything within my hips is nice and stretched so I don't pull anything. that I get asked a lot is, why did I get into bodybuilding? And this is a pretty tough question for me uh, because sometimes we're not always truthful about the real reason we get into things, but um, I got into bodybuilding because I left a very tough, uh, abusive relationship that I was in for six years. And as you may or may not know, when you're in a toxic relationship, you sort of lose yourself who you are as a person. Um, when I left the relationship, I started to do things to make myself feel better about myself, about my situation. And I started going into the gym and started working out. That was my outlet. It was my outlet as a person, it was my outlet as a mother. Um, and it was a way of finding myself. And, um, I don't say that often, right? I think it's the reality of many, many people that they're in very abusive relationships, physically, emotionally, and mentally. And while I was embarrassed about that back then, uh, today it gives me strength to help someone else kind of go through that and, and let them know that they do have the strength to carry on and, be, and create a new chapter in their lives, um, that they are not their past, that they can reinvent the wheel and start new. That's what really got me into bodybuilding. Um, in a nutshell. Because now that my um, warm up is done, we're going to start off with some um, leg extension. I like to do this um, because one of my areas of opportunity are my tear ducts. So I truly focus on the tear ducts at like, the beginning part of my workout. On uh, this leg day, so I divide my leg days into two days. Some days are hamstring and glute focus. Today is strictly squat and quad. So we're going to really focus on the tear ducts and the outside of the quad, which is this area here. So we're going to work on the inner ducts. We're going to do four sets of each leg for 12 reps. So we're going to do relatively lightweight, only to warm up the knees. Ready to go. We're going to squeeze nice and slow. Just to 
bring that blood into the area. My carbs and my fats fluctuate uh, depending on what time of the day I'm working on and pre and post is usually my most important carb meal. So um, on season he monitors my diet on a weekly basis. So it changes a lot depending on how my body is changing, looking, um, whether or not I'm dragging um, and he needs to give me a little bit more fats or a little bit more carbs. So, say that I have a very, every show there's a particular diet that I have, um, I, can't, I can't say that because it changes so much and my body changes every time he changes my diet. So Johnny Castellana is my coach, he is a true genius and uh, learned my body so quick um, but he knows that I have to keep cheat meals to a minimum even off season, if not he will kill me.
team. How did it affect me? I think COVID affected people very differently. For me, uh, when I came to New York, all I did was work. Work, 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 work. Because I had to make a living in a city that was so expensive. When I had my children, all I did was work. And even though I got to spend time with my children, because they're my priority, COVID really allowed me to spend the type of quality time that I was never able to do as a mother because there were no other outside uh, distractions like work and social events and things like that. All I did was spend time with my children and really build a strong bond with them, stronger than what it already was. I wasn't really like a going out and partying type of person, so my social life was never really impacted as much. Uh, but spending some quality time with my children that I was never able to do before was something that um, impacted me in a positive way. In a negative way, I wasn't able to see my family. Uh, my parents got sick and I wasn't able to see them. And for a very short period of time, I thought I was gonna lose my father and never be able to see him again. So that piece was depressing and, and um, I was desperate and scared. But overcame that and um, I had to learn patience, a lot of patience, um, but um, other than that, um, I lost very important people in my life and I was never able to say goodbye. I think that that impact made me realize how important it is to tell the people that matter to you that they mean something to you, that you love them, that you miss them. Um, on a consistent basis because sometimes we take people and situations for granted and we think that they're going to be around forever and then COVID happens and it's just a split moment so don't forget to tell the people that you love that you love them often. I know what people have done here is call again about slow control movement but I go ahead and put on some knee sleeves people find these irrelevant, not helpful. For me, it really supports me to keep it nice and tight. And as long as I feel comfortable doing the exercise, that is so important, right? If you don't feel comfortable, you don't, you don't have the right form. You don't do the exercise the way that you're supposed to because it's a slight bit of fear. So the knee gives me support. I feel comfortable.
see me transition from off season. I'm currently 14 weeks out into stage. A lot of people wonder what that's like. What's the life of a bodybuilder? What does that look like? So I'm hoping that through, through this uh, documentary, you'll be able to see hands on. What does my workouts look like? What do I shop for? Like, what does my diet look like? What does my li my day to day life looks like when, as a mother um, working a full time career? So. You're, we're going to be transitioning from now to showtime and you'll be able to see that progress and hopefully learn what that lifestyle looks like and then so that you can do it too. It's a form of a squat. Some machines are called strap. This is a roll type machine. But it's a squat and the only difference is that the weight doesn't stay on your shoulders. It literally just stays in your hip area. I find it that it is super easy, especially if you have like a back injury. Um, it is more controlled, a lot smoother. I have an L5 S1 injury, and this works perfect. I'm always squat. I alternate, and I'll try to do this one. It's a great piece of machine, so try it out. If you tell me a little bit. for a show, you have to tap into an inner will and an inner power that otherwise you wouldn't you wouldn't um, put yourself in that position to tap into that inner person. Discipline, it taught me how to be disciplined and how to stay disciplined. Uh, it's given me a strength that I didn't know I had uh, to overcome anything. I'm tired physically, I'm tired mentally. It's, it's taught me to have strength in, in, in more ways than I can imagine. I tell people all the time, you really want to find yourself, you really want to find whether or not you're a beast, you're a diva, you know? Go into bodybuilding. You're going to just evolve into a person you never thought you could ever evolve into.